What's up, everybody? How's it going? Welcome to another episode of Albums Ranked. It's been a very long time since I did my last one. I had a son, so he's taken up a lot of my time. But we're back strong. We've got family members. This is episode 30. And I thought, why not do something special? Now, anyone who knows me has seen my videos. I don't know if I've talked about it a lot, but the band that we're doing today, I'm not actually a fan of. I've always said it. I've never been a Beatles fan. Oh yeah, we're doing the Beatles. I should have mentioned that first. <laughs> but yeah, I've yeah. never been a fan. They're it just, help. they're just, yeah. they're just too old, you know. And obviously, I like to listen to dark, aggressive music. But if if you've seen mine and father's Slade ranking video, hi, welcome back. If you haven't, go check it out. Thousand um, views, great, good stuff. Another one of father's ultimate bands you know how i've always said maiden is my band while well, the beatles and slave were his and today we've also got saf if you remember her from a while ago hello my robbie williams video from about a year ago or so she's you know she's a, a lot, year ago maybe what is <laughs> a casual a casual beetle fan oh very very rarely occasionally only when we drink and get together eh? all the yeah. singles come out and we're just like turn it off but anyway, so I thought, why not reunite the family with another one of Father's Loves? And I've done this purely for history. You know, they are the most famous band in the world, right? You yeah. know, even today. Even, yeah. today. even Wikipedia says they are dubbed the most influential band of all time. Wow. And it's like, what a, title. what a claim. So I was like, all right, cool. So we've got 13 albums to get through. We're starting with... Um, the iconic debut. Is it iconic? I don't know. We've got Please Please Me all the way up to Let It Be, which is over there, and I've, it's just buried under some stuff. We're going to do it in chronological, again, like the Slade one. I do all my grouping videos chronologically, so yeah, start with Please Please Me, end on Let It Be. Um, we're probably going to have some controversial opinions, being of the younger generation, you know. <laughs> but that's what this is about. Let me know down below what your favourites are and why our picks suck, you know. So... Yeah, unless you want to say anything else. Uh, if anybody out there knows me, oh, <laughs> like personally or well, personally, because they yeah, Beatles fans, because he's famous these days. Eh? Hi, hi. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I should have said that when we did the Slade one. But, oh, yeah. Never mind. Let's get into it. All right, cool. So we start back from 1963 Three. on when March 22. Yeah. With their debut. Please, please me. Now, if you just real quick, um. What have you got over there? How, what, this is a first press? Yeah, this... All the LPs that we hold up have come from a, a box collection. I just thought it'd be important to let you lot know that. Yeah. Um, you say they've like never been played? Well, I must have played them once when I bought the box. Yeah. And then decided to... You can see how glossy. Yeah, look at put that. Put them in the box and just leave them there. Yeah, so I won't take out the LP because I'll probably... He'll yell at us. Yeah, damage him. Not allowed to touch his, his records. But yeah, anyway, March 22nd, 1963, we get Please Please Me. This is a very simple album in terms of in terms of Beatles. I remember you messaged me saying that they're, what did you say? It was like, it's very boy bandy. Every song is about love. And being and romantic. And, you know, and obviously yeah. given the time, you know, everything, it's all yeah. they could sing about, you know, they were... Yeah. They were the good boys and they the, were the good boys. And yeah. the Kinks were the rebels? Is oh, that fair the, to say? Yeah, the Kinks weren't around then. Yeah, obviously not. So yeah. I'm a sucker for debuts. I think debuts are very important regardless of what the band is, except Judas Priest. Their debut is actually terrible. I've got Peace Please Me at number nine. So it's not dead last because it's fun, you know, it's basic beetle, you know. And I think you told me that actually half of this is covers. Yes. Which doesn't yeah, which, when you look at what? the when you look at the track track listings mm -hmm. you know, oh yeah you can see, you who's, can written see them. who's written them at, ah. at the time this album when it was released this was their live set that they used to play up up in liverpool right up in the club so when they had their first two hits which are on this album which are please please me and love me do they just said right we need to rush rush an album out as fast as we can Love me so, on this album. Yeah, it's right there. Oh, sorry. So sorry. they they thought let's go up to Liverpool and record them live, but it, it didn't happen. So they rushed them back into London into the studio, and this was done in one day. Oh, was it less than one day? Ten o'clock in the morning to eleven o'clock at night. Oh, Damn. not being funny, but Sabbath and, did their first album in twelve hours. And at the well. time, it cost four hundred pound. 
which, and which back then it was a lot of money. Yeah, but the record company E E M I and mm -hmm. Party Phone, they weren't sure about them, but they thought, hey, what give, else have we got going give on? Give them a go. Then? Yeah, yeah. So it's technically a live album done in the studio. That's awesome. I don't know that. So, see, this yeah. is why I brought you along. This stuff that Wikipedia doesn't so, do. Yeah. But yeah, favorite songs. It's like I say, it's a bit kind of a bit like Slade's debut album, the the ballsy beginnings one. Um, half of its covers, but yeah, I saw her standing there. I thought it was yeah, fun. It's, it's a, a great record, great just, just by itself. Yeah, I like now that I know that it all covers Anna. Go to him, I think it's fun. Yeah, um, yeah, Love Me Do is okay. Twist and Shout, we love it, we all know it. Love Me Do is the, one of the best Beatles songs of all freaking time. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. And uh, Chains, I like Chains as well. Those are the ones that stand out to me. I think they're the ones I added to my non shuffle, but yeah, yeah. yeah. number nine for me. Okay, I put this at number seven. Um, just because I didn't think it was great, but I didn't think it was awful either. Like, mm -hmm. it was very fun. It's, uh, you just listen to it and you're like, oh yeah, okay. And then it's kind of finished, um, which is fine. But yeah, obviously Love Me Do is a great song. It's like one of my favorite Beatles songs. So gotta love that. Um, and I saw her standing there. Well. Yep. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a very fun album, but yeah, I don't think compared to, you know, the other albums, what comes later. This is just pretty cute and fun. So yeah, number seven. Awesome, good job. Yeah. Well, I won't speak too long. Um, I don't mind it, it's good. Um, yeah, it's, I saw her standing there, it's a great song by itself. Please Please Me, which was the second single, which got to number two. As you all know by my slay stuff, I'm a stats man, numbers man. I'm slowly turning into her. So, <laughs> yeah. But no, it's good. I thought Please Please Me at number nine. Same, okay, awesome. Yeah, no, that's but, great. Hey, good start. Yeah, what awesome. a dorky looking bunch. Look at those ears, man. Look at those brows and those well, full yeah. haircuts. You know? Love it. They look like literal children. Yeah. They look like high school kids. <laughs> cool. Uh, we stay in the same year, correct? Yes. So you told me that the Beatles album, these first chunk, I don't know when they stopped, but they were contracted to two albums a year. Yeah. Every album up until. Is it Revolver? Rubber Song? Yeah, 66. They've all got. 14 songs on them. Did yeah. you notice that? Are we up to? Yep, with the Beatles, yep. Yes. Album two with the Beatles. They've all got 14 songs on them. Seven yeah. songs aside, 20 minutes aside, you know, pretty standard. Uh, with the Beatles, 1963, uh, 22nd of November. What happened on What the... happened that day, everybody? Day. Think about it. Think about it, you all know it. Okay. Yeah. JFK got shot. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> God. More history for you. So, yeah. yeah, we race into more or less the same of the first album. Oh, yeah, yeah, so if you have it. Mr. Postman, is that not their song? No. Oh, that's upsetting. Anyway, right I've it. put, this might throw you off, I've put with the Beatles, I've put with the Beatles at number two. Number two? <laughs> number two, I've put with the Beatles <laughs> all, right, the, okay. all the way out there. I'll tell you why, real yeah. quick. I listened to the first two albums, like kind of back to back for a lot before I went on to A Hard Day's Night, just to really hone in what I'm about to do. And I won't lie, I listened to Please Please Me and then this one straight afterwards, like I did it in one go, and I thought this one was boring. And I reckon I just, I was zoning out, it was too much of the same, so I stopped and went about my day. I then went back to it either the next day or whatever, and it was amazing. I fell in love with it. I thought every song was great. Side One is fantastic. I love Side One. It won't be long, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It won't be long, yeah. yeah. I think it's amazing. Um, my favourite song on this is probably Don't Bother Me. I love Don't Bother Me. It's just so cool. I think it's great. Yeah, and Mr. Postman is fun. Um, it's honestly, roll over Beethoven, we all know it. It's funny. I like it. Number two. I know. Bit of a shock, but I'm, I'm claiming yeah. it. It's a bit cool. Yeah. Number 12. <laughs> Simple as that. I genuinely don't even remember listening to it. That's how boring I found it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. You've got no nothing. I got no comments on it. No nothing to well, say. I was so bored. <laughs> I could say a lot more. I yeah. love it, eh? Um, <laughs> between Please Please Me and this album, their popularity just went through the roof in Europe mm -hmm. and Britain, whatever. And this went to number one. <laughs> number two. <laughs> replaced Please Please Be at number one, I think. You know, so. But the songs were much better. Yeah. Their songwriting I really thought got that. really good. Um, <laughs> Not for you, obviously. And for some reason, I don't know why, but he's beginning to be like me. Don't Bother Me is the best song on the album. 
George Harrison's first song. Don't bother me, yeah, leave George, me alone. George just, Harrison's first song. It's like the nicest room and, song. Um, it's, it's a about really saying, go away. <laughs> it's a really good song. And I also like Hold Me Tight, mm. which is a basic Paul McCartney thing that he always says that he, he could write in five minutes, which he most probably did. But um, very high... Iconic cover mm -hmm. with, with the faded faces. They did a remastered one, eh? And, or a, um, or a re yeah, they didn't like it. Oh, was it the Americans that got yeah, a different color yeah, and yeah. they didn't like it? And this is good. This is good, album. The Beatles. With the Beatles! Number five. Bloody hell. <laughs> Tables are going to be flipped, I reckon. Yeah. With their, for a while there, they didn't put singles on the albums. So on I this, on this album. I'll, I'll mention that in a minute. On yeah. this album, you won't find I Want to Hold Your Hand. Which we were expecting. Or the B-side, which is this boy. She Loves You is not on here. Which, again, infuriated so, me. Yeah, so they shows what their songwriting was doing. They had enough strength and power to write singles and write albums. Mm. Album songs. So, number five. Yeah, I actually forgot to mention that as well. Like the Slade album uh, video that we did. Yeah, all the infamous songs that everyone knows are not on these albums because that's just the way music was, it right? Was, you release a single to hype up the band rather than hype up did. the album, so yeah. So that's I didn't what. know that. Um, so here I am listening to the Beatles every day for eight hours a day while I'm at work and I'm thinking, where's Hey Jude? Where's Paperback Rider? Where's, 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 where's Ticket to Ride? Yeah, where's all these bloody good songs? And I realised... Oh, yeah, oh, I'm just saying it loosely, yeah. And I was gutted. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely gutted. Yeah, but okay, so we move on to album three, which we finally change a year now. We've got July 10, 1964. We open with... Ah, day's night. So, um... And I've been working like, like a dog. dog. So, pretty much, again, like with the Beatles from Please Please Me, Hard Day's Night to from with the Beatles is another massive step up. Do you know what I mean? Just in... There's no track... Oh, there's Like... The songwriting, I think, even though it's still the same stuff, like in terms of romanticizing, yeah. it's it's just getting a bit more professional, I suppose. Yeah. They're not, they're not, they're caring a bit more and whatnot. You know, this one is fun. I won't lie, this is a great album. Um, a Hard Day's Night is probably the f one of the first songs that I actually recognized, like before the once the. Does that make sense? I don't know any of the other songs. If I fell, if I fell in love with you. Great song. I loved that. I'm happy just to dance with you. That was fun too. Good song. Um, uh, when we get home, I'll be back. You can't do that. You know, side one again. I thought was the stronger side. Just I just had more fun with side one. I've got a hard day's night at number three. Yeah, Mate. it's pretty up. It's pretty up there. You're you know? crushing your tops already. Jeez. Well, it's just how it is. Obviously, I prefer <laughs> I prefer boy band Beatles to psychedelic Beatles. Uh, oh, sorry, I forgot to mention. Any time at all, fantastic song. I think that I've played that song a lot since yeah. I heard it. Any time at all. But yeah, uh, number three. Number I'm three. You this time, man. Eh? Well, yeah, okay. How does it? He forgot to mention that it's a movie. This is the movie soundtrack. Get facts right. Fake fan, so I'm not even a fan. I keep so, telling you. <laughs> obviously, yeah, you know, there's a lot of people that have seen the movie. Um, um, I haven't. Have you seen it? No. I've got it on DVD and Blu ray and stuff. Sweet, like. we'll borrow it. We'll borrow um, it. We should have watched it before this. So, I won seven songs, uh, all featured in the movie. Mm. Yep. Can't Buy Me Love, that I think is featured twice. I'm not too sure. Also featured in Yes Man, real quick. Yeah. Um, yeah. But this is great. This is the epitome of Beatlemania. Beatles. Beatlemania at its best. Mm. 1964, they couldn't do a thing wrong. They were most probably the four most popular people in the world. More popular than Jesus. Yeah, no, that was two years later. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, this, you can't get any better than this, I think. Um, Hard Day's Night, I Should Have Known Better is my favorite song off the album. And it just emphasizes Beatlemania. Mm -hmm. It's happy, it's go lucky, it's powerful. It's go lucky. Um, and I forgot to tell you as well, I'm a bit of a George George Harrison fan, so anything that George Harrison does with the Beatles, I quite like. So even though he, he had no songwriting on this one, the song that he did sing, I'm Happy to Dance With You, is corny, but I, <laughs> I like it, you know? Um, and side two, is just great songs. Um, 
I'll cry instead is fantastic. It's only a minute 45. I <laughs> know. Oh, but it's a country and western twang on it. Yeah. Bloody good. And um, you can't do that, which was the B side to the Can't Buy Me Love single, which is great. But this is the bee's knees. This is the dog's bollocks. So does that mean it's number What did you rank it as then? Number one, 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 one. <laughs> wow, woo! Yep. <coughs> All songs were written <laughs> and, and composed by John Lennon and Paul McCartney. Yeah, they're pretty much uh, the dynamic duo now. Yeah, they are. They couldn't do a thing wrong. Watch the movie. I should probably watch it too. Beatlemania at its. Right, go on. Crush him. <laughs> Number 11. Is that all you got to say? Number 11. Why? Um, People. Okay, so yeah, I don't know if it's a generation Sorry. difference. Um, but yeah, again, I found this so incredibly boring. <laughs> um, and again, I could tell you two songs, which is obviously Hard Day's Night and Can't Buy Me Love. Yeah, and that's literally it. Oh, buddy. Two singles. It just, for me, just all the songs just blended into one. And I was just like... Halfway through it, I was like, is this over? Um, <laughs> so yeah, sorry, I'm not a fan. Sorry. Oh, God. But again, I have no musical talent in me whatsoever. You're so who not. am I to sit here and say that's a bad album? But um, yeah, that's what? what we're doing. So I don't, I don't like it. Spend an hour and a half and watch the movie. You um, might appreciate it. Okay, we'll see. All right, we move on to... Yeah. Wait, we don't move on. We stay in the same year. December 4, 1964. We get the Beatles' fourth album. What the fours going on? What's it called? Beatles for Sale. Um, yeah, this is a pretty fun album, I won't lie. I, after A Hard Day's Night, was like, oh yeah, you know, uh, that's pretty peaking. Do you know what I mean? What comes after this? Uh, I won't lie, I did get a kick out of it. I did have to listen to it, like, more, obviously more than once, but I did have to listen to it, like, a good couple of times to kind of remember what the songs were and if I was actually enjoying it. And by the end of, like, I don't know, Listen 4, maybe, I was. I quite, I quite enjoyed Beatles for Sale. I put Beatles for Sale at number four. So I've put it up quite high. Um, no reply, fine opener, great stuff. Um, rock and roll music, very rock and roll. Well, it could Chuck, almost Chuck be Berry. a Chuck Berry song, isn't it? Well, it is. Oh, it is a Berry song? <laughs> Bought that be why then. <laughs> I'll Follow the Sun, which is only two minutes long, that's all right. Um, although, obviously, the song that makes this album, eight days a week. Come on, eight days a week is fantastic. How can you not love eight days a week? Um, You're always on my mind. Is that yeah. it? Yeah. Hold me, love. Yeah. Um, the medley <laughs> is a bit funny. Kansas City, hey, 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 all good. But yeah, it's just a fun standard Beatles album. You know, it's still Beatles. You know, they haven't really developed in terms of sound. They don't do that for a little while yet. So it is essentially the same album to me. But it's the songs are funner. You can say they are they bouncier. Is that the word? But I got a kick out of it. I'd listen to it again. Um, I'll take it when, you know, you've moved on. So, yeah, Beatles, <laughs> Beatle, uh, Beatles for sale number four. Well, I can't wait for that day to happen. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's get serious here. This is not good. Okay. I'll just get up and leave. Eh? It's, it's okay. Right. Look at the colour. The... They're as bored as anything. Oh. They're not smiling, they're tired, they've had enough, because they were touring all the time. All the time. Studios, TV appearances, around the world. Oh, you've got to go and do another album. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, because we're still contracted for two a year. Yeah, yeah, so they did this after the Hard Day's Night, which they had every song composed by Lennon and McCartney. They go back to the early stuff, there's cover versions. Mm -hmm. Buddy Holly, Chuck Berry, Cal Perkins. Wow. You know, <laughs> wow. Really, you know, really back to basics. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, it's, in the, it's in the list, obviously, but um, out of the 14 tracks, I'll listen to two or three. Wow. I, I'm a Loser, which is a great song. Um, what are you doing? Another McCartney song that nobody plays, I don't think. Nobody talks about it. Nobody, nobody talks about it. I don't think he even talks about it. <laughs> and when he does, he says, oh, it's just a song that I did in, once again, five minutes. You know? Um, yeah. Yeah, obviously everybody bought it. 
but that wasn't the same. Wasn't the same. Wasn't the hype after? Yeah, hype after yeah, that. yeah. They sort of were getting bored with the touring side of it, and they wanted to spend more time. And I would say this didn't take very long to record because they just went in there, banged out some songs. Wow. Okay. So. Uh, I've actually put Beatles for sale. I can't see it. Number 11. Ooh, down the bottom. Mm. Yeah. 11 out of 13. Um, I put this at 13. The bottom of the yeah, bottom? Yeah, I thought this was terrible. Damn. Yeah. You, you can tell that. I literally don't even have anything to say about it. Yeah. Eight days just... a week? Nah. Oh. Nah. What's well, out of when, 14 yeah. tracks, there's one song that's catchy. Yeah. You know? Eight Days a Week was released in America as a single, went to number one. Wasn't released in England because they wrote I Feel Fine and that went to number one. Once again, a single that wasn't on the album. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Crack up. Okay. Right, well, apparently Beatles for Sale is not good. Let's see if <laughs> help is any good. So now we go on to 1965. Five. Released 6th of August. 1965. So this, like Hard Day's Night, is also a film. Again, haven't seen it. Should I see it? Is no. it worth it? No? Okay. Um, again, another typical Beatle album, I think. You know, helps a fun song. It is what it is. Um, Ticket to Rides on here. Yeah. So that, that helped as well. Um, I remember enjoying it. You know, Yesterday was fun as well. I Need You. It's a cool song. You know, it's it's all good. You know, I don't mind it. But, you know, I, I, I put it at six. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so it's kind of it's yeah. it's kind of give or take, really. Yeah. Like it's good, I'll put it on again and not moan about it, but I would obviously put on other stuff instead of it. Mm -hmm. But like it's just run it's standard, it's um it's middle of the pack. So yeah. Yeah. Six. Yeah. Not too much to say, haven't seen the film. Uh, yeah. Uh, second film, terrible film. <laughs> um, but yeah, once again the seven songs on side one are the seven songs in the movie. The songs on side one are really good. They are a good bunch of songs. The night before um, is great. I Need You by George Harrison. Good. Uh, Ticket to Ride is just a great song anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the whole side one is great. Side two, you can forget about it. <laughs> really. You know, once again, they just mishmash of songs. Okay, like I said before, I'm a George Harrison song, so the George song on side two suits suits me fine. Which is what? Um, tell me what you see. No, uh, no, yeah. I got that wrong. Because <gasps> I haven't got my glasses on. Oh. You like me too much. Oh. Which is, it's a simple song, but I, you know, I'm a George man, so I quite like it. Yesterday, what a waste of time. You know, just did nothing for me then. Guns N' Roses covered that one. Just nothing for me now. It's just yesterday. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> and the last song, Dizzy Miss Izzy. Dizzy Miss Lizzie, is one of the last cover versions that they did. Oh. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, there was one more cover version called Bad Boy, bad. which is on the bad boy. Bad boy. American release. Okay. Ah. It wasn't on the British release. But um, yeah, side one is great. I'm actually putting help at number six. Oh, just like me. Oh, what good. a surprise. <laughs> right, you sure on. you sure we're not the same person? Yeah. Alright, go on, put it at six. Make it a triple six. I oh, put, sorry. That's right. I got city. I put help at number three. Oh, finally. I loved it. Right, finally, a bit of praise from the young and Yeah, I just thought it was Praise from the wind. I just thought it was so much fun. I just liked listening to it. I enjoyed I really liked um I Need You. I really mm -hmm. liked that song. And yesterday is a lovely song. Oh. Um, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. It's shocking. But no, yeah, I enjoyed the whole album. I thought it was fun. I found myself just humming along and singing along to because you know, once you listen to thirty seconds of the song, you're like, okay, I know where I going. know where it's going to go, and yeah. I can sing along. So yeah, I really enjoyed it. By thirty seconds, we've already heard the chorus twice. Mm. So yeah, number three <laughs> from Lily. Nice one. Okay, cool. So we're moving on again. Same year, 1965. This time, Christmas time. Once again. December 3rd, 1965, we get Rubber Soul. Now, this album is an interesting we're one. That fire. Yeah, we're watching that fire. Yeah. No, that's not the song, that's, <laughs> that's just the mum. Uh, Rubber Soul. I tried 
and I tried to like this one. I really, really did. I don't know why, but I couldn't, I couldn't vibe with it, eh? I, there are some songs on here that are okay, but to me, they're, they're easily forgotten. Drive My Car, I don't know what, like, it's just a standard Beatles song. To me, it was silly, I didn't like it. The only song on here that I would probably sing out loud more than once is, I'm looking through you, where did you go? That's great, did George write that? No, no, no. be cool no. if you did. Ah, I put Rubber Soul at the bottom. <gasps> Rubber Soul is 13. Bloody hell. I just couldn't like, I just, yeah. Jesus, yeah. Michelle, the word, think for yourself. I just, yeah. Let's just say I was very happy when I heard I'm Looking Through You because it was a song that I actually enjoyed. So, yeah. And look at the, look at the font of the album. It's, it looks like it's getting into hippie phase now, you know. Oh, here we go. So, yeah. Not liking the hippies. I don't like the hips. Right. <laughs> Um, I put this one at number 10. Um, again, I what? I just caught myself listening to it and I would forget the first three songs that I'd already listened to. Because I was just like, okay, mm -hmm. whatever. And I found by like, definitely by side two, I was like, okay. Come on, let's, let's get this over and finished with. Um, I'm really intrigued to see what her number one is. Yeah, like, whatever. Songs weren't great, songs weren't terrible. I just, again, I'm so sorry, but boring. <laughs> boring. So yeah, number 10. Right, Rubber Soul. Fantastic. Oh, fantastic. Um, change in the music for a start. Yeah, oh, is this the one with all the sitar on it? Yeah, George. Maybe that's why. He starts playing Indian instruments. Oh. The sitar, the boy meets girl song is gone. I love you, I wanna hold your hand stuff is gone. Thanks, mommy. These are lyrics oh, that you, these are lyrics that you have to listen to. A you know? meaning, the, right. Yeah, these are proper songs. Not not your two minute, I wanna hold you. yeah, 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 yeah. Nowhere man, it's great. Three harmonies, fantastic. Yeah. George again, coming now, he's coming and writing properly now. <laughs> Think for yourself. Only took five years. If I Needed Someone, great songs. Great songs. And for some reason, him again, I'm, I'm looking through you. you. Where did you go? Oh, I love I the melody. Yeah, that's, that's, great. It, that's great. It's just, a, uh, if you noticed, McCartney just belts his songs out. You know? Yeah. Album fillers is what they're called. You know, fella. and they're just simple songs. Oh, God, no fella. But um, mm. this is good. This is good. This is really good. This was the start of their, what I think, their new phase. Yeah, phase two oh, Beatle for sure. Yeah. I would say that yeah. they yeah. sound more like musicians yeah. and yeah. not. Yeah, the C yeah. yeah. This time around, Christmas 65, but they're just starting, we're just finishing the last British tour. Ooh. Right, mm -hmm. unknown to everybody, but this was around around that time. They were spending more and more time in the studio. They love being in the studio, inventing blah blah blah. And I just it's just come to me. George's part with the sitar is in Norwegian wood. Ah, it's in wood. Yeah, the bird has flown. Okay. Rubber soul, I've got at number three. Oh, ah, okay. there you go. Yeah, it's good. Sweet, I feel better now, my bottom's out of the way. So I'm excited about this next half because in a way I feel we leave the boy, like you said, they become you know proper musicians and stuff. I definitely feel like they've left the boy band vibe behind. And now I suppose someone took a certain substance and unlocked a whole new realm of songwriting. Would that yep, be fair to say? that'd be fair to say. Yeah. Right? So obviously things yep. get a bit more weirder and yeah, second half Beatles 2.0. We open Revolver. Oh, yeah. released August 5, 1966. Real quick, oh, before I get into months. it, do you want to do you know anything about this album cover? Oh, it's just their artwork. No, who, um, do we know who drew them? Uh, I'm thinking I don't want to put myself wrong. Um, by all means, correct us down below if we are. Could be a bloke called Robert Fraser or, or Robert Blake. On a, I can't. Um, the album cover designed by Klaus Vormann. Klaus Vormann. Jeez, I'm miles away from that. <laughs> okay. Um, hey, okay. All cool. of that. I mean, let's just get straight into it. 
I was excited to listen to this album. I've never heard it before. I haven't heard any of these albums prior to this ranking, so I was, you know, I'd heard Father whisper about how good this album is and things like that, and I, I, I love Revolver. I think Revolver is fantastic. Revolver is my number one pick. Yeah, good on you. Um, yeah, get him. I think it's... It was, it's just it's just so much more fun to listen to. Easily Ta- could be mine as well. Taxman. Yeah, that was fun. It's all good. Right? I think it's great. Eleanor Rigby. I love that song. Orchestrations. <whistles> mm. You know, where'd that come from? That came out of nowhere. That was fun. Um, my favourite song on this album, though, is easily She Said, She Said. I love She Said, She Said. Like I've never been born. I love that little melody. I think it's so much fun. Um, what it's like to be dead. Yeah, I think it's just, it's such a it's fun little album. Mm-hmm. I'm Only Sleeping is great. Yellow Submarine is on here as a song. And I had, to, I was forced, I think you were, you were too. We were forced to sing that in primary school as part of our <laughs> team A singing. Do you remember I that? I do remember yeah, that. Yeah, I didn't know what it was when I was seven years old. And, uh, so it was quite funny to go back later in life. Well, you know, and realise, oh, it's a Beatles song. Yeah. Same with uh, Six Months in a Leaky Boat. We were forced to sing that as well. Um, <coughs> Dr. Robert, I mean, yeah. Side two, you can kind of, you know, again, side A, I think it's stronger. But yeah, it's a fantastic album. If I was to buy any Beatle album, it would probably be this one. So, yeah, number one. Revolver. Number one. Ooh, good on you. <laughs> Round of applause, because I would have no trouble with that. You know, I've put a hard day night at number one, but this is most probably number one extra. This is great. One this is the ultimate album. One um, yeah. Following on from Rubber Soul, they continued in the songwriting vein. It's great. George had three three songs on here, mm-hmm. which is great for him at the time. Yeah, Tax Man um, was good. Love Love You Too is uh, it's it's okay. I want to tell you is my favourite George song on this mm-hmm. album. Once again, it most probably never gets mentioned in all the articles about Revolver. It just says, oh yeah, George Harrison wrote I Want To Tell You. I thought it's great. Uh, but yeah, they're all good. I'm a, I'm a only sleeping. She said, she said. Angel Burke can sing. Dr. Robert. Yeah. And the one at the end, Tomorrow Never Knows. Well, there you go. There you play, That's right? the one, isn't yeah. it? They start to experiment in some crazy stuff. <laughs> and this was this was put out three weeks before their last ever concert. Oh. So you could tell that they were never gonna play this kind of stuff on stage. No. Because it's all studio and uh, they were just finishing up their last tour of America and Burn. they so yeah, that's it. We're down. We're in the studio. But this is great. I've got, oh, I've, I've, no, I've got this at number two. But no! Oh, good. It could have easily been number one. Awesome. Um, I put this at number five. Ooh. Yeah, that's good. Because, yeah, I just really enjoyed it. I thought it was different <clears throat> compared to, you know, what we had... What we've all been listening to. What we've to. all been listening to. So, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Um, I thought the music was at, like... The instrument side of it was actually just a lot better. It was like musically, it's just a lot better. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I love Dr. Robert. That's such a cool song. It is good, to <laughs> yeah, be honest. Yeah. Good. yeah. Yeah, so. John Lennon, I thought, was pretty good on this album. Mm. Yeah, you know? I think they shine, eh? Yeah, yeah definitely. His uh, lyrics come through. Number come five. Through. I'm just pretty, trying to pretty find good. the checklist for the next one. Right, so if we thought Revolver was experimental, what comes next only trumps that theory because this is like probably their most experimental album in a way. In a, I don't know. June 1st, 1967. What? How, what's the full name? Sergeant Pepper Lonely Hearts Heart Club, Club Band. Band. Right. Band. Band. Yeah. So <laughs> this album is deemed, even if they didn't mean to, it's deemed the first concept album yeah. ever. Yeah. You know? Um, having the Beatles come on with a persona of someone else gave them the freedom to not write another She Loves You type of album. We can literally do anything we want because we're not being the Beatles, right? That's right. Hence why it sounds the way it sounds. It's a it's a bombastic, yeah, circus bandy yeah. sound, right? 
Um, there's a there's a lot of inspirational genres on here. I think avant-garde's one of them. What did you say before? Psychedelic, Psychedelic world Ele stuff. You know, it's all Ele over the place. It's it's yeah. we've progressed in styles so far beyond what the debut is now. There, mm. it's almost like a whole new band, and it's only what five years later, six years later. Yeah. So five. Yeah. So I've put Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band at number five. I've got it a bit higher in the, higher than the middle. Um. Again, not having a lot to do with this album because certain someone who will rename Lameless doesn't really play it very often, you know? So I've kind of, you could say been brainwashed to ignore it, but we'll let them speak when it's their turn. Um, with a little help from my friends, I was familiar with because it's come on our rock countdown before. Have you noticed it's on Kate in the Head as well? Yeah, I was going to bring that up. I was going to say, did that sound familiar to you? Yes, I was singing along and I was like, God, why? It's is getting bad. Cat in the Hat. The song yeah. getting better, yeah. Smash Mouth, no, but it's all, yeah, Smash Mouth sang that song, I think. Was it them? Yes. Yeah, rest in peace. Yeah, true. Um, <laughs> yeah, getting better was fun. Uh, Lucy in the Sky, obviously, we all know it, we all love it, it's a good song. Um, I like, sorry, I know it's not my turn, but just because I'm looking at it, yeah. when I'm 64. Yeah, we played that for our mother last year when she turned 64, and I was like, yo, <laughs> dad, give me a song with 64 in the title, any song, and he goes, oh, well, I'm 64. So that's fun, you know, I don't mind that too. Mm. Um, but yeah, you can tell the songs lyrically, as well as musically, are getting a bit weirder now. They're trying to cover some interesting stuff. But it's a fun album. Um, I get why all the white hipster girls like it, you know, all those girls that live in Wellington and that wear, that <laughs> have glasses and wear, have purple fringes, you know, <laughs> alternate, you know, I get why they deem it amazing, but... Yeah, like it's not, I don't think it's amazing, but again, that's just my take on it because I'm listening to it today, not when it first came out. So yeah, it's fun as a standalone album. Number five. Number four. Mm. I loved it. I thought it was bloody great. Um, yeah, I just found myself when I was listening to it, I was just very happy and I was just bopping along to everything. Um, and I mean, I've always been intrigued to this sort of era of the Beatles because I've always just I guess yeah I guess now because I'm listening to it properly you know I've always just seen when the, when it comes on TV and stuff you know I've just seen the, the fancy tuxedos and stuff yeah, just, I've always just been band. like what the heck are they on about yeah. but actually now just listening to it from start to finish I'm like bloody creative bloody good very good I loved it number four any favorite songs or um, other than what I said or you know Rita was fun yeah I, I mean I hate to be like so generic but like Lucy and the Sky of Diamonds is just Oh, so I love that song. It's yeah. so good. Sorry, I won't. I'll let that too. No, you carry on. I was just going to say, sorry, I didn't click. A Day in the Life as well, the last song, I think it's amazing. I think it's great too. I love the mm. juxtaposition between the two parts that make it one song. Mm. Go on. Well, what do you want me to say? Now, for those who watch the Slade video and love whatever happened to, he doesn't. So, yeah. Um, I'll be honest with you. I, d I don't know what the fuss is about, you know, voted the most celebrated album of the last 150 years, well, oh, I don't know, um, I don't know what the fuss is about, to be honest. Okay, it's it's okay, you know, um, getting better and fixing a hole, and A Day in the Life are the only three three songs that I like, um, obviously they've, they've, they've finished touring, it took six months to record. Which is impressive considering how grand it is. To write and all that. They had time to spend. Um, I've read somewhere that, you know, George was was hardly there during the recordings, you know, oh. just that kind of phase. It, it's all McCartney, mm -hmm. really. It was his idea to do the Sgt. Pepper theme, vibe, yeah. vibe you know. So the other three went, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> we'll have a go. Why not, yeah. But um, at the time, 1967, when it came out, yes, it blew everybody away because nothing like this was heard before. Mm. And it set the standard for other concept albums through the years. Yeah. Um, it's not my bottom, but it's not my highest, obviously. So, <clears throat> um, I've actually got it at number 10. Oh, that's actually higher than I thought it would be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Lucy in the Sky is okay, but I actually prefer the Elton John version cover. 
from. He is the biggest you Elton John, John hater. Uh, yeah, yeah. Back on all but in the early seventies, Elton was okay. But, uh, right. Nice. Yeah, like you know, I thought because of the hate that I've heard you roast that album with, I thought that would could be like at number twelve maybe, but number ten was good. Moving on, like I say, we're in experimental Beatle area now. I don't know how to describe this next album. At first, I wasn't even sure if we were including it, but then he came back and said, nah, it's like, you know, it's, it's, staple. it's part of it. So I was like, righto. The Magical Mystery Tour. What does it sound to me? The f oh, is that the tracks? Mm. Okay, sorry, I thought that was like an extended title. No. Um, yeah, Magical Mystery. Um, you're probably better to describe what this album yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, is it studio? Is it live? Is it a film? What's going on? Um, it came out, it's, it's actually a uh, TV film. Right. It was released on Boxing Day in Britain in 1967. And it got slammed by the critics, by the fans. Nobody could understand it. It was a really weird film. Mm. I mean, um, look at the cover. <laughs> but, yeah, but over the years, it's... it's oh, that's some Alice in Wonderland stuff, right? Yeah, it's, it's gained a cult cult following amongst movie makers, young movie makers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, song-wise... I was going to say, you might as well go first. Yeah, yeah. song-wise, it's quite good, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at it, I don't play it that often, to be honest. Do you want... Do you but, want the CD? So got yeah, it might be easier if I just, just quickly the, the look, tracks, looked yeah. at the CD. Well, we'll grab that back up. Uh, the Fall on the Hill is a, is a good song. Uh, Blue Blue Jay Way George writing about his friend Derek Taylor mm -hmm. whose whose book I've got. Oh, the that guy. Yeah. Fifty Years Adrift. I oh, am the Walrus. I think is great. It's such a good song. It's a great I also love that yeah. song. I, am the then, I thought you would. You. I thought you would hate that. No, I love it. That's I've always always loved that. But, and then you get to, you get to side two. Sorry, just reading the book. Yeah, yeah sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, on side two, it's all the singles. Hello, goodbye. Strawberry Fields Forever. Penny Lane. Oh, Penny Lane. All you, all you need is love. Oh yeah, uh, side two is all the singles. Yeah. Baby, you're a rich man, which is a B side. Um, yeah, uh, you know, but the film got slammed, mm. and a lot of people got a lot of people thought, "What the hell was all this? What, what are they doing?" Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't know whether they were trying to remove their image by doing outrageous things. Yeah. But um, it's just a standard album, to the point where the actual album wasn't released in Britain until 1976. Yeah, which so, I didn't know. So yeah, what does that tell you? That's yeah. nine years after. Yeah, so um, yeah. I've actually got it at number twelve. One off the bottom. Yeah. Damn, this is my number one. Oh my Are you serious? <laughs> Crack I loved, up. I did not expect that. I loved every bloody second of it. And I loved all the songs. Because I didn't look at the... Like, I just list, I just listened to them. So I wasn't sitting there being like... What songs is cool? Yeah, what songs is cool? Yeah, so... Yeah. I knew... So oh, yeah, no, I'm just, I'm just looking at the picture. Um, So, yeah, I knew most of the songs already. Because I really enjoy this album. But, yeah, God, man, The Walrus. God, that song puts me in a good mood. Um, yeah, and I absolutely loved it. So that's that's my number one. Good number on it. one. Good on it. No, yeah. that's good. Sorry. That's all right. So, twelve, one, one. Uh, yeah, you know, kind of like like that. You know, it's just a, it's a standard film. Uh, sorry, I haven't seen the film. It's a standard album. It was fun. I I didn't get a mind. I didn't mind listening to it. Sorry. Um, yeah, Walrus is. When I heard it, I was like. What the heck is this? But then I heard it again and I found myself tapping my foot. Mm. Um, Strawberry Fields Forever was okay. Mm. You, you know, Side 2 is the single stuff. But I was more interested in Side 1 because I didn't know what they were. Fall on the Hill was cool. Um, Hello Goodbye is fun. All You Need Is Love. Yeah, it's fun. But like, I still like you. I put it at number 12 as well. <laughs> so it's one off the bottom. <laughs> the only reason it's not the bottom is for the walrus. Yeah, that's, that's yeah. The Walrus is better than See, anything. the Walrus just conquers. The yeah. Walrus is better than anything off Rubber Soul. Yeah. That's oh. why it beats Rubber Soul. <laughs> Don't get it. So, we then come out of a... We pretty much come out of the weird, experimental, psychedelic-y phase. And we kind of, I think, go back to more 
The Roots. Trad not not tradi the Roots. Not traditional but... Beatles. It's still a bit weird, but it's a bit more calmer. Do you know what I mean? Is that mm. fair to say? Mm. You know, there's less walruses and more normality stuff. We get the White Album. Released 22nd of November, 1968. So, mm. same date as the other one, whichever one that was. Yeah, so, in those five years, between With The Beatles and the White Album, mm -hmm. you can see their progression. Definitely. And it's only taken five years. Yeah, that's a... That's a speed what, what, run of what five years. What they've done in those five years. is monumental. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now notice that this one is completely white. The, the, the Beatles written there is in white, which only proves that this one's OG. The rehashed album has it in grey or black, whatever one is. But yeah, OG here, just putting that out there. Um, OG means original. Original gangster, so it means original first. Oh, yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's first press. Anyway. Um, untouched. Um, this is a double album, which back then, I imagine, was a pretty big deal. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. That means it's longer. It's very long yeah. compared to the rest of them. They're all, oh average, they're all averaging 35, 40 minutes. This so one's bloody long. This one's 90. Nin 93 minutes. Yeah, Jeez. so, you know, it's standard film length. So I thought, I'm probably going to need to listen to this, you know, in chunks. But no, I got through it um, quite quite easily um i didn't like it at first i thought it went on for too long and i thought maybe i was just getting over it so i stopped myself and i came back to it and it went up in my ranking after doing that i've got the white album at number seven so pretty mid-range um it would probably be it would probably have been higher had it not been 90 minutes mm -hmm. uh, i'm gonna put this down and read tracks off here because there's no tracks on here Back in the USSR, which Fun. is a great song. Starts with planes and... <clears throat> oh, we could just open it. Yeah. Mm. Always looks... Like it. a loser. Back in the USSR, which is great. Which is a parody of, like, you know, uh, proud American songs. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, uh, Beach Boys. Yeah. Uh, surfing USA or something. Mm -hmm. Dear Prudence. Yeah, I could do without that. Oh, bloody la da da, whatever it's called. Stupid. I... Stupid. Yeah, I could do without that. I'm familiar with... Guitars gently weeping. We've Great. heard that before. Great. Yeah, that's nice. Um, uh, Martha, my dear, I thought was really nice. Martha, my yeah, dear. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was beautiful. Slade did a cover of that. Oh, I know that. Thank you. Um, I'm too. Side A and B are great. The first LP on this is fun. I could, I could say it's a long album, so I'm trying to not list every song. Just solid. Um, yeah, I'll just go out and say that side A and B were fun. Um, Piggies. Piggies was weirdly beautiful to listen to. I loved the instrumentation on Piggies, but the lyrics were a bit yes, George. dark, you know, about pigs getting slaughtered. <laughs> um, yeah, number five, I think, oh, no, what did I say? Seven, sorry. Yeah, seven, I think it's great, and I probably would listen to it again, despite it being an hour and a half long. Yeah. Okay. Um, again, apparently one of their greatest albums that they made, according to the internet. Yeah, a, a lot of people would rank this as number one. Mm -hmm. Um... Obviously, I haven't, but... Um, None of us have. A bit of history, quick history. They wrote half of these, or most of these, while they were in India, in the early, early part of 68. Um, even though it's, like, it's called The Beatles. I think you, it's Mother Nature's song. You could tell know. that they were still together as a band, but the four guys were writing songs on their own, mm. individually. Yep. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. I've got this song, and the other three will just be the backup. Whoever was uh, writing, yeah, yeah. Um, the producer at the time, George George Martin, who had produced all the albums, the fifth Beatle. Yeah, yeah, you could see. Yeah, he he has actually said they had th they came in with thirty tracks, <laughs> and he says what, <laughs> and he said. Cut it down to 16, and you got and a great album. Ah. And they said, no, we're going to record everything that we've done. Yeah. Anyway, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, personally, the first two sides are good. Yeah, A and B are great. Yeah, a, the A and B are good. Um, while, while my guitar gently weeps, back in the USSR, Bungalow Bill, yeah, good. I'm So Tired is good. Um... Don't Pass Me By, good old Ringo, good old country song. You can't do that. Oh, yeah, I was actually going to comment yeah, on that. Uh, I I've always liked that. Uh, could have done without the country twang. Don't Pass Me By, that's I great. I like Ringo. 
He's great. So I, I will, a simple song by McCartney, just by himself. Yeah, the other three weren't needed, you know. Um, sides three and four, I don't really listen to. There were a few I admired on three and four. Um, like, except you know, yeah, Mom, okay, that was fun. Sexy Sadie, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, oh, but the big one. Helter Skelter. Yeah. You know? Fantastic. Apparently, which, like, which, you uh, could argue is the first heavy metal song. Yeah, yeah. And if you want to get really morbid and creepy, go and ask Charles Manson what he thinks of Helter oh, Skelter. Yeah, to bring if up you know who, If you know who Charles Manson is, yeah. but we won't go into that. But, um, yeah, people rave about it. Mm. And fair enough, too. Good on them. Right, I got this at number two. Uh, I've got this at number seven. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. I've got this at number seven. Same, same as me. Oh, God, can you tell me? How original. All right, yeah, I got this at number two. Are you my son? That's two. That's amazing. Yeah, I mean, I think I think my favourite song on here would have to be Blackbird. Oh, yeah. I just think it's a really nice song. McCartney and the acoustic guitar. Yeah. Well, I won't go on, but I will just say, I first heard Helter Skelter with the U2 cover on Rattle and Hum. So Rattle, I, Rattle and Hum, yeah. I didn't know that that was a Beatles song. So when I was listening to this and that came on, I was listening to it and I thought, God, that sounds like that U2 song. And I thought, well, that's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, oh, it's a cover. But yeah, no, I really enjoyed it. Um, I really like, um, where is it gone? Yeah, Blackbird. I like um, My Guitar Gently Weeps. And I like the ooh la dee do da da. Uh, stupid. I think like it's fun. Hey! <laughs> stupid, stupid yeah, song. Yeah, awesome song. Awesome stupid album. Cool. cool. So after that colossal monster album, we get an interesting album. Yes, we're including this one. This was the one that I was unsure whether or not to include as well. But then Dad said, well, we included Flame, and that's a soundtracky film. And I was like, yeah, but that one's more of an album. Anyway, the Yellow Submarine soundtrack album uh, released. On 13th of Jan 1969. So yeah, side one is the, is the album, side two is the score. Um, again, the song, Yellow Submarine, it's fine, it's fun. Um, All Together Now I thought was fun. I was not, okay, so not watching, never, seening, <laughs> never seeing this film, it was quite funny to almost try and watch it in your head as the songs went on. Mm. Like, All Together Now sounds like the song where they go underwater. You know, mm. it's just, it's the way everyone, there's like, not choirs, but there's backing, backing noises. Yeah, it yeah. sounds yeah. very, very fun. Um, All You Need Is Love was, you know, it's famous and iconic. And because I'm me, and because of the music that I listen to, I got a kick out of the score. I listen to orchestral albums, versions of my heavy metal stuff, and without the heavy metal, and it, to me it sounds cool. So like, Again, watching the film in your head without watching the film was fun. Pepperland, mm. Sea of Time. Like I said, I can't tell you which song was which out of the score. But I just remember thinking, this is fine. It's cute. It's not It's not like an 80-piece orchestra. It's yeah. just simply, simply put together. But, you know, because of what it is, it's number 11. Ooh. So, yeah. 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 Well, I'll give it the time of day. It's crap. <laughs> Absolute crap. <laughs> Yellow Submarine. It's a bloody children's song for Christ's sake. Uh, uh, um, only a northern song is good. All together now, yeah. Hey, bull dog. <laughs> it's rubbish. All you need is love. Why is that on there? <laughs> you know, bloody two years old almost. You know. So no, I've got, I've got no, no time for it. No comment. All right. No comment. Sweet as you were. Yeah. So what is it on your rankings then? Oh, it's. Not not number one, I'll tell you that. It's number thirteen. <laughs> yeah, dead bottom. Yeah, dead bottom. Sorry. All right. Just like the submarine. I've mm. got this at number nine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I couldn't pick out a memory from listening to it no. that stuck with me, but I wasn't as bored as I was with the other stuff. <laughs> yeah. So it was just very catchy. And it was and, very yeah. just. Yeah. And oh, obviously, it's a film. Have you seen it? No, oh, I haven't even seen the movie. No, don't be stupid. Animated. They don't even take part in it. Oh, now it's you're telling. Four, four different guys doing doing their voices. Oh. What a waste of time. Even they didn't, but they had to do it because of their contract to make three films. Hard Day's Night help, and this is the third film. 
<laughs> Did I? Really? I don't think so. Right, moving on. Yeah, cool. All right, after that abysmal uh, shock. Um, tension. Tension much. We get one of the most famous, iconic album covers of all time. The legendary Abbey Road, back to the glossy album covers, very nice, released September 26, which was the other day, yeah. 1969. Um, won't lie, never heard this album before, this, <laughs> this, um, this ranking, you know, very unfamiliar with what was, what was on it. Um, I had fun though, you know, it's like the other one that we just talked about that I've uh, forgotten about, what was it? Um, Yellow Submarine? No, nah, no, no, no. Um, the White Album. Yeah, it's, you know, back to... Back to roots, back to real Beatle music, you know what I mean? But the lyrics are still funny. There are certain lyrics on here that just crack you up. Come together, we all know it, we all love it. Cool song. Would I have it as the opener? Maybe not. It's a bit simple to be the opener. Um, really? Do you not get excited when you hear the... Oh, I mean... Okay, maybe, okay sorry, yeah. Maybe, when you, yeah. maybe it's just your version, but yeah. <laughs> Maxwell's Silverhammer, that's quite funny. Lyrically, it's a bit violent. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's catchy enough. Yeah. Oh, Darling was fun. Um, I Want You, She's So Heavy doesn't need to be eight minutes long. It could have just been I Want You and we could leave it at that. Yeah. Here Comes the Sun, yep, all good. Um, the, med the medley thing at the end of the album, like where the last five songs are like a minute each, I thought was a bit, po I thought was a bit pointless. Um, Carry, Carry the Weight was awesome. Like, y like poly, poly thin... Polythene Pan, I thought it was, you know, and she comes through the window. They're just silly, I think. Um, yeah. It's a fun, side A is obviously better because it's much full of more some more songs. I've put Abbey Road number eight. So, yeah. I don't deem it as the greatest Beatle album of all time. I probably never will. Um, I probably won't rush back to listen to it, you know, but... Do you think the album cover caused, gave it more hype than the actual album? More hype? Like, no, not really. Because I feel like when people think of the Beatles, this is the first image that comes into people's brains. Well, it's because it's such a famous picture. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a shame the album was just kind of average. Actual, <laughs> you know, it's an actual street in London and Abbey, Abbey Road and yeah. St John's Wood in London. And I just love that John Lennon uh, literally looks like Jesus yeah. Christ. Well, we could, we well could, that's the thing. We could go into that. He's, into that theory. Yeah, he's John Lennon is Jesus. It's shiny, Phil, I can't see the picture. Alright, you hold it then. Yeah. John <laughs> Lennon is Jesus. Ringo's the Undertaker. Paul's the person that's dead. And George is the grave digger. Yeah. Right? Who told you that? The internet. Well, it's, it's, just, a, it's a theory, it's a fair it's theory. A theory. They thought Paul was dead. Yeah, um, if you look at the. At and the Paul's if you, out of sync with everyone look, else. Yeah. And he's not wearing shoes. And he's wearing bare feet. It was a hot day. And if you look at the number plate, 28IF. Uh. Paul McCartney would be 28 if he was alive. Uh. See, there was rumours going around that Paul was dead. What a conspiracy! Yeah, exactly. Ah. Yeah, aside from that, aside from that, I had it number eight. Yeah. Um, what, what do you think? I'm in two minds, to be honest. Um, <laughs> Octopus's Garden is fun, but I love that. The history was that they were breaking up. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, it's confusing because they recorded. Let it be first and chucked it on the shelf. And then for some reason they came back in a few months later and did Abbey Road. Yeah. Weird. And they thought, right, they could tell it's gonna be their last. So they did it and it's come out. That's what it is. What it is. Yep. Um something Here Comes the Sun. Here comes the sun. Here comes the sun. Mm -hmm. George Harrison's two of his most famous contributions to the Beatles, which is great for for him. Mm. Oh, darling, I quite like by McCartney. Octopus's Garden is great. It is, isn't it? <laughs> That's fantastic. I love it. Um, I would like to be. BBI, yeah, you know. Okay, I don't like Yellow Submarine, but this is the same kind of song. <laughs> yeah. but for yeah, some reason, I quite like it. Garden. As far as the medley, they were just songs thrown together, bits of songs that they had started but didn't finish. Mm. Mm. Apparently John Lennon didn't like the concept, but he went through with it yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> went through it with it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> Golden Slumbers carry that weight, I quite like. Yeah, carry the weight was fun. Yeah. But once again, people will say this is the best album they made. 
Good luck to them. Um, <laughs> How's that going for you? Yeah. I actually got it. I can't see it. It's quite high. I got it at number four. Oh. Yeah. On my that's, list. That's fine. Yeah. Um, Abbey Road, I've got it at number six. Kind of just smack in the middle. Yeah. Kind of. Um, yeah, like, when it started and yeah, now here come together, I, don't, I love that song. I don't know why. It just oh. it just does something to me. Crap. Um, and yeah, Here Comes the Sun, obviously everyone loves that song. Octopus's Garden. God, that's a fantastic song. Um, but yeah, it's hard when you're listening to it on Spotify. Because have you noticed there's so many different mixes and different versions? And yes, so yeah. oh, right, okay. for us youngsters yeah. that use Spotify, I was just it's like not, it's not the ideal situation. Yeah, and I was kinda of getting confused because they were yeah. all over the show. So yeah, like just always gotta stay away from super deluxes. And yeah, and remasters. Just give me the tracks yeah. on the album and that's it. That's why right, I searched them and just see. Just get the original yeah. Yeah. album or CD. Um so yeah, I think that kind of threw me off a bit because this one just went on and on and on and I was just so confused. But I didn't listen to them all because I was like, okay, I don't need to listen to Here Comes the Sun three times. No. You know? um, but yeah, number six. Cool. Ah, all right, team. You've been doing well. You've made it this far. We've got one more to go. One more iconic album cover, really. Um, May 8th, 1970, we have Let It Be, which is pretty much a cool name to end on because it's what it could kind of be like, nah, just... We want to make another album. No, just let the Beatles be. Let it be. Let it, just let it go, kind of thing. It's accepted. It's done. Um, I wasn't excited about going into this album purely because I'm not a fan of the title track. So I was like, surely the rest of the album sounds like that. You know? But there was like maybe... Oh god, even looking at it, I'm like, I'm struggling to remember what, what, what song is what. So, <laughs> having said that, I put Let It Be at number 10. So, yeah, this one's not my favourite, eh? I'm not gonna, probably won't play it again. Um, Across the Universe is probably my favourite song. I really, really like that one. That's the one about changing the world. Yeah. Yeah, I really like that one. We're gonna change the world. Yeah. yeah. I, Me, Mine was, was okay. Oh, Get Back. Get Back's a great mm. song, you know. Thank God that thank God that was the last song because <laughs> it made it it made getting through everything worth it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, fair enough. Get yeah. back is a fun yeah, it's a good, it's a good song. song. Get it's back good, you know, it's a it's good like, song by itself, yeah. Yeah, so to have that at the end was like, cool, that was worth it. So yeah. Number ten, not my favourite. Ten, favorite. okay. Yeah. Um Yeah, I'm ne it seems strange, but I've actually um never listened to it. <laughs> not to say got warm to it, but having watched the documentary Get Back, yes. Get yeah. Back, which is basically this anyway. And I've heard the songs more in the last couple of years than I have over the last fifty years of it. Um I'm thinking, oh hey, it's it's not that bad. Okay. You know? Yeah, yeah. And um yeah, across the universe is good. Um I've got a feeling one after nine oh nine. For You Blue, once again, George had his best. Um, yeah, uh, so, yeah, a bit of history here. Being the last album uh, officially released, even though it was recorded before Abbey Road. Did I say? May 8, 1970. Yeah, you which is yeah. young and here's birthday. Obviously, she's not... Not 1970. She's not 1970. She's not 53. <laughs> Sometimes she feels like it, but... Yeah, yeah but, um, so I've sort of grown on it just a bit, nice just one. by watching the documentary mm -hmm. two, three times. Really? Yeah. Oh, true. You've got Disney now, so yeah. you can watch it anytime you want. Yeah, that's that's right. Yeah. Let it be. Okay, it's it's okay. Yeah, I'm not a fan of it either. George does a nice kind of solo. Get back is good. You know. It's a shame that the rooftop concert wasn't longer because they seem to be actually enjoying themselves. Didn't they get Didn't they get called off by the police? Yeah, yeah, yeah. making too much noise. Because they, the they weren't actually talking to each other, kind of. Yes, they were. No, no, they weren't. Yeah. But um, I've got it at number eight. Okay. Which, yeah. If you'd asked me three years ago, 
I, I would have put it at like number 12. <laughs> but I've got yeah. to listen to it a bit more. Yeah. So number eight, for me, I think is not not too bad. I got it at number eight too. Nice one. Funny, because yeah, I watched the documentary as well. I actually, when Get Back came on, I didn't want to listen to the song because of how many times they record it. Yeah, yeah. And that yeah. damn documentary. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I said earlier, like this was, I think because I watched it, but this is the album of them just completely falling apart. Falling apart. Yeah. And completely just being like, I don't yeah. want to do this anymore. Yeah. Um, and saying, like, just in regards to the album, um, I did find it actually quite boring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's quite a ballady album. Isn't it? I mean, I liked Let It Be the song anyway I really like that song but for the rest of them yeah I was just like I like Maggie Mae that was cool but yeah I think the only reason it's kind of higher is because of the documentary and it's cool because I got because you know you see it being made yeah, yeah. so you kind of have more like you, you watch it in your head when you're listening mm -hmm. to it mm -hmm. um, but yeah it's kind of boring but yeah number eight Awesome as team, we did it. I don't Woo! know how long that took. Five minutes, an album times 10, that's 50 minutes. Let's see how long it actually is without all the editing. So like I said at the start, let us know down below what your tops are. Why is Magical Mystery actually terrible? Why is Revolver incredibly overrated? Why is the debut the best they've ever done? Let us know those, overrated. Let us know those controversial <laughs> opinions that you've got. Um, yeah. I've said in previous videos that this is like my last stint of anything that's not heavy metal. After this, we'll get back into we'll get back into talking about heavy metal stuff. I promise. But yeah, thanks for hanging out with us while we sit here and discuss. What about the raspberries? Oh. You, you, ever, you, ever, you ever heard of the raspberries? Uh, I want to do Phil Collins slash oh. Genesis. Oh. We'll see how we go. But um, Tom yeah. Petty and the Heartbreakers. Thanks for oh, hanging out. With, oh, thanks for hanging out with us while we sit here and discuss the most influential band of all time. That's right. Um, anything you want to say? Uh, no, but yeah. You know, Sixty years on. Yeah. People are still buying their album. That's right. So we're still talking about. Great. All right, quickly oh. round off. Who's your favourite Beatle? George. <laughs> Mind your go. <laughs> Thomas the Tank. Exactly yeah. right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I said at the start, um, I'm not a Beatles fan, and I think I can still say that even after yeah. listening to their whole discography. I'll listen to a small handful of songs. Yeah. You can always put uh, fans, well, I think, into two categories. There's the Beatlemania, 62 to 66, mm -hmm. and then there's the studio albums, 67 to 70. Right, yeah. either the stuff that can't be liked. Either like one or the other. Personally, I'm the 62 to 66. Guy. I think I am as well. And there's you know, a selection of 67 to 70. But yeah. if you gave me a choice, I'd see the time. I'd see the uh, Beatlemania side of the Beatles all, all the time. All right. But yeah, we can talk about that forever. Thanks yeah. for hanging out with us, team. Keep an eye out for the next ranking. Who knows what that'll be? Probably won't be for another six months. But until that happens, team, like right. always, I reckon we'll do one next week. Stay inside. Stay safe. Wash listen, your hands. Listen to the Beatles because it's iconic. And we'll see you all later on. Ta-ra. Bye. <laughs> Bye.